Okay, hey, what's up, guys? My name is CJ, and I'm here with Boston Mike. I'm here with Boston Mike. Uh, so, me and Sunday took a trip out to Flagstaff today, and we had zero expectation for anything. But this guy is out here with his Jesus Saves sign. Mike, tell us what we're, what you're out here doing today. Oh well, it's all about Jesus. Just always want to keep the focus on Him. He actually said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And so that's a beautiful thing. You know, we all want attention. So I used to want attention. And I would do anything to get attention. Absurd things, twisted things, bizarre yeah. things. And um, I thought that that was, you know, fulfilling. But then, you know, I realized I, I didn't have anything that really meant anything. And I couldn't get my needs met by acting foolishly and trying to get attention out of the world. So I turned to Jesus and I found that he gives me all the attention I need. Praise God. He fills our needs. That's why David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. I shall not want. I've yeah. got all my needs met. He actually said, he said, the Lord is my portion. Yeah. You know, all of these wonderful things that when we start to read the Bible, it comes alive because it relates to us. We want to believe that those things that are there are true because that's what we're searching for when we look out into the world and we go out and we try to engage in in relationships or whatever we're searching for that truth and when we find you know Jesus is the way the truth and the life yeah. then we rest in him and we that's find so our good confidence and our boldness and our enthusiasm yeah he says be zealous for the Lord that's so awesome so people are probably thinking like this guy's crazy what is he doing with a sign yellow Jesus saves this boldness tell me about like where did it come from well to tell you the truth um, I'm from downtown Boston, and I grew up on the streets. So, you know, it was easy for me to learn how to be a social person. And I, plus, I come from a city that's very diverse. So for me, you know, color was the most beautiful thing, that we get to know each other because we all have something to contribute to each other's growth and development and understanding of all the realities of life. And so, you know, those things were fostered in me in that city environment, but it also created in me sort of a, an ability to communicate. You know, a yeah. natural ability. Yeah. And uh, even though I dropped out of school in the ninth grade from drugs and all the other crazy stuff that destroys young men, somehow through osmosis or however, in the Boston area, I still obtained so much was given to me. And I wasted, I squandered just like the prodigal son. Yeah. We all get to that place where we don't understand the value and the nature of the things that we have in our lives yeah. we abandon them to re reckless and foolish indulgences yeah. and then we come full circle around and this yeah. is what happened with me I come full circle around got saved beautifully and um, God bless me I was at a point in my life where I had overdosed so bad that I couldn't put a sentence together and they put me in a mental hospital and it took 30 days before I could you know really start to frame the sentences again that's how bad I was but that was at that point that I had cried out to God and I was reading the Bible every day and that's what it does. It says that he washes your mind so by the good. water of regeneration. So in the process of being born again, the Holy Spirit takes that word and gives it life and it cleanses and transforms and renews and all of those good things that happen to a man, they have to percolate and regurgitate. They have to evacuate. I gotta get it out. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. So Boston Mike, you're out here just getting what God has deposited in you out. Mm. Tell me why that's so necessary. Hmm. Well, think about the Colorado River. It all starts at the top of the mountain. Hmm. The king sits on the throne, right? And he sends down all of these blessings. And then they make their way down through tributaries and into all the dry and arid places. He even uses that metaphor when he says he's going to fill the valleys and he's going to bring the mountains down and he's going to make a highway in the desert and there'll be streams in the desert and the desert will bloom. All of these images yeah. of what God does in a man's life. Not, not just, you know, it's metaphorically, but he does it in the reality, but he does it in our lives because he creates us. We have a deep hunger for God, like the deer panteth for the streams of water. So my soul panteth after thee, O God, you know? And um, when you get to that, you, it's an overflow. What I was talking about, the it comes down from the mountains into yeah. the streams. What does it do? It fills the reservoirs. Yeah. We've got deep water reservoirs and the power and the pressure that is up against those reservoir walls, it's intense. That's what I feel like. I feel like I've got a reservoir. I've got a joy inside of me. It's unspeakable and full of glory, yeah. you know? And it just, it comes out. He'll, he'll do that. Especially when, look at here I am in my natural state, yeah. loving the attention, 
yeah. as a human being. God gave that to me as a gift. Yeah. He shares his glory. Yeah. He said, just like Moses, he came down from the mountain, he was glowing. It's the, people said, come your face, Moses, you're shining. You know, I want to be shit like Moses. I want to shine, 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 yeah. you know? That is so awesome. For the people who are maybe skeptical about uh, coming into faith, skeptical about Jesus, skeptical about the joy that you have, what, what would you share with them? Well, it doesn't end there. It's called the heritage of the Lord. So God starts with the things that he created us to fulfill, man and women. He puts us in families. He says that in the Psalms. God puts the lonely in families. I was a lonely, broken man, lost deeply in sin, destitute and ready to, I should have been dead so many times over. You know, it's the story of all of us, well, a lot of us. But then God redeemed me. He put me in a church. It's a family. When I, first time I went to the church, it was like a big 10-foot door, wooden door. And I was afraid that the ceiling would fall in when I walked in. If they knew what kind of person I was, they wouldn't even want me there. But instead, when I pushed that door open, there was a man behind the door, and it scared me. He jumped out from behind. He was about 80 years old. And he hugged me, and he said, God bless you, brother. I'm so glad you're here. I was home. The prodigal came home. Yeah. I got the father's embrace, you yeah. know, in a symbolic way. I never left his home. And he blessed me, a beautiful wife. My wife was Miss New Hampshire. Oh, wow. She was the Christmas queen. She was the trade fair queen, right? But she just used to admire me. She'd come to church. She'd sit in the back and she'd look up there. And I'd look over my shoulder and say, why that girl's looking at me? <laughs> well, eventually God blessed and brought us together. We have six children. I have 12 wow. grandchildren. Praise God. I have a great grandson from a daughter, a granddaughter who's a minister. Mm. <laughs> and I have a 14-year-old daughter who just led her best friend to Christ. Oh, God, we got joy. It's unspeakable. It's got nothing to do with money, Let's God, go. gold, anything. My goodness. It's the Lord. And it, yeah. it's, it comes out and it spills over. Yeah. And people get, they want that. Yeah, yeah. Taste yeah. and see that the Lord is good. Mike, meeting you today has been such a joy. <laughs> I, I just want to thank you, man, uh, for, for loving Jesus the way that you do. And I, I want to just say this. Keep it going, man. Keep the joy flowing. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep preaching the gospel. This is so awesome to see because I know people are impacted by this. So we may never meet again, but I pray that we do. But if we don't, I will see you in the kingdom, brother. Can I give you a hug? You can. <laughs> and I can tell you, I'm homeless. I've been homeless for four years. <laughs> Let's go. Hallelujah. But Hallelujah. it doesn't matter. I let it all go. Mm -hmm. Foxes have holes. Birds of the air have nests. Mm -hmm. but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Mm -hmm. He could identify with every single aspect of human experience. Mm -hmm. You know when he, Jesus wept over his brother Lazarus? Mm -hmm. People extrapolate on all the different reasons why. But I think it's because he had to fulfill Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. A man of sorrows man acquainted of sorrows, with grief. Yeah. <laughs> he had to be touched with the feelings of our infirmities in that way. Mm -hmm. He knows you know, what it's yeah. like to lose a friend. Yeah. He knows everything that we feel and hurt for. Yeah. But that's why I love him. Yeah. Because he, he knows what I need and he knows how to provide it. That's so good. If you're, if you're going through sorrow, through grief, through hardship, understand this, that Jesus is a man of sorrows who wants to join you in it and pull you out of it. He's so faithful. He loves you. Be blessed. Peace. Amen.